Seeing an original flathead V8 32 Ford is one thing. Driving one is unheard of. What's up, everybody? My name is Elliot, and I'm here in sunny Scottsdale, Arizona at the Worldwide Auctioneer's January Auction. Behind me, what is potentially the most expensive Chrysler that will ever be sold. And there's a whole bunch of other stuff here. This is an awesome event, and I can't wait to take you through it. Let's go check some stuff out. So like I said, I'm out here at the Worldwide Auctioneer's January Scottsdale auction, and they actually asked me to come out here and do live commentary for them. So that has been super, super exciting. It probably will have already gone and passed by the time you see this, but be sure to check out the past live stream. I'm sure it was a great time and I'm sure I didn't mess anything up. <laughs> but anyway, what I wanted to do today was take you through some of the cars that I found most interesting at this auction. And also the guys at Worldwide Auctioneers are actually going to let me drive a couple of them, which is absolutely unheard of for an auction and a tremendous opportunity. So let's check out some of the cool cars they've got here and then go see what we can drive. Starting out with this 1932 Chrysler Imperial Cabriolet, but this isn't your standard Chrysler, as you can tell by looking at it. This is actually a coach-built car by Bowman and Schwartz, and it's potentially going to be the most expensive Chrysler ever sold. Now, again, I don't know what it hammered for yet because the auction hasn't happened yet, but this is kind of their cover car, and you can see why. It is just awesome kind of menacing looking. It actually has a lot of the callbacks from early, early hot rods, but this is from an era from before there were hot rods. It is just one of the coolest looking older cars I have ever seen, and it's no wonder why it's their cover car. At 825,000, 850, 850,000. Right behind it is something also really, really special. Let's go look. So this is a 1929 Duesenberg Model J. And if you know anything about Duesenbergs, you know that they are kind of the luxury of luxury. This was peak American automotive manufacturing. If there's Rolls Royce here, Duesenberg is up here. These retailed for about $25,000 in 1929, as opposed to a normal car like a Ford Model A, which would have retailed for four or $500. So you can imagine the price differential was substantial, but so was the quality. And it really shows when you look at this thing. First of all, it is this stunning color that you can't really accurately capture on camera, but it's like this champagne-y, cool, silver, not quite gold color. It is just stunning. It is a massive car as well. It's like 16 feet long or something nuts. But what's really cool is some of the features that it's got inside. By the way, they said this was okay. They said I'm allowed to touch the cars. Inside, not only do you have this beautiful dash and awesome looking handbrake, but I found this to be the most interesting thing. You see that? It's a brake bias controller. It even has dry, rain, snow, and ice modes. And remember, this was 1929. Features like that, like a selectable, adjustable anything, really wasn't common until like 05. So to say this thing was ahead of its time is putting it lightly. This is awkward. There we go. Yeah, just no like to slam the door of cars that are worth more than a million dollars, but that's a car from the 20s. Over here, we have this gorgeous 1935 Delahaye 135M competition drop head coupe, which is an absolute mouthful. But look at this car. It is absolutely stunningly beautiful, and it's only one of four built by designer Fragoni, which I know, who are you calling a Fragoni? But in all seriousness, this car is stunning. It is a Pebble Beach Concourse d'Elegance attendee and it absolutely knocked him dead. And honestly, it's knocking me dead with this yellow paint scheme. And it's one of the first cars to ever feature a disappearing top where the top didn't just flop back. That was pretty advanced for 1935. And it is no wonder why this is one of their showcase cars here. You don't need to know a lot about Delahaye to know that this is a special vehicle, but there's a lot more special stuff inside the tent. Just outside the tent, we have this gorgeous 1983 Ferrari 512 BBI. One of the coolest and best looking early 80s Ferraris there was. But in here is where, well, as they say, all the magic happens. We've got this gorgeous custom 1961 Chevrolet Impala. And apparently the owner of this car spent over one and a half million dollars modifying it, which as you can imagine means he changed every single tiny bit of it. And it shows, look at this engine bay, an LS engine, individual throttle bodies and a velocity stack 
stack style configuration, the big block style valve covers, shave door handles. It is just absolutely perfect. And that's really cool. But what's really up my alley is this car you see behind me. This is a 1937 Cord supercharged Roadster. Yes, supercharged in 1937. So not only is it powerful, but it is one of the most beautiful cars of all time, I think. Let's take a closer look at it. It's got a lot of cool stuff going on. First of all, obviously stunningly gorgeous suicide doors an amazing color combination this is a very big color in today's day and age but one of the things you notice right off the bat are not only these cool fenders but these are the actual exhaust pipes coming out from the hood into the fenders and then back around underneath the car it just gives it this really really cool look and it doesn't stop getting cool even from the front this was the 1930s remember pop-up headlights really weren't a thing until the late 70s maybe early 80s but this 1937 cord has hideaway headlights so you can tell very very advanced and it looks so cool because you can see the exhaust coming out from either side into both fenders they called this a coffin style hood and one of the reasons that this part is so long is because believe it or not this car is front wheel drive it's just got so much cool stuff going on with it but take a look at the gorgeous interior not only do you have a gorgeous machine turn dash but check this out see this this is the actual gear shifter it's not one of those traditional you know four foot throw big shifters from the 30s this has an electric pre-selector shifter so you take that little thing and you snick it up and down and when you push the clutch in it'll select the gear for you and you can let it back out that was the peak of luxury and really only cord and a few other manufacturers did this very very cool also you can see right here this is a crank to open up the hideaway headlights i could go on about this car for hours but you could tell this was kind of the ferrari of its day it's an american car with 190 horsepower this thing was making practically 100 more horsepower than anything else you could buy at the time just an absolutely incredible car very excited to see one up close like that now behind me is something really really cool that i never thought i'd get to see so this is an engine out of a Duesenberg Model J, the exact same kind of Duesenberg that you would see out front here. But this is what the engine looks like when it's out of the car. And this is a fully functioning engine that they're going to be selling here at Worldwide Auctioneers as a complete unit. This engine runs. So if you have a Duesenberg shell out there, as many of you I'm sure do, this engine's ready to just hop right in there. But just take a look at the size of this thing. It's it's massive and it has so many cool things that were so excessive and awesome at the time. Like, first of all, it's got a shaft driven generator, a huge, huge carburetor. And this is what gets me. This has got to be like an 18 gallon capacity oil pan. It is simply massive. Another cool thing is it's got the firing order printed on pretty much where the flywheel is. That's very, very cool. You can see it's an overhead cam straight eight engine. And this thing's massive. It's like 420 cubic inches and it makes like 265 horsepower power, which is again, 200 more horsepower than everything else was making at the time. So it's very, very cool. It's crazy to see anything Duesenberg related up close, but to see a completed running engine on a stand is just something else. This is a 1957 Chevy Bel Air, kind of the poster child of drive-ins and soda fountains from the 50s. But this one's really special. It's a fuel injected model and it's actually all factory original. You see how it's got two radio antennas here? Well, I asked, why? Does it have like two different bands? Like, does it get better reception? Well, nope, one of them's fake, and it is literally just to make the car look better. And I think it does. And then behind me, you'll see a car that doesn't quite look like it fits in with everything else that's shiny in here. This is a 1930 Stutz Blackhawk. Now, if you know, Stutz is kind of an American manufacturer along the same lines as Auburn and Cord and all of the upper echelon brands. This was kind of towards the end of their existence, and they made this model as an attempt to make a more affordable, not quite entry level car but the reason this one looks the way it does is because it's kind of in barn find condition but that's about where that ends apparently they spent over thirty thousand dollars mechanically sorting this car so what you end up with is a very rare very original patina barn find looking car that's perfectly running and driving and it is just really really cool there are only less than 30 of these built and in this condition you can guarantee that this would knock them dead at any cars and coffee it is really cool to see and definitely a car you could drive if you actually wanted to
Now this is something very special. This is a 1932 Ford V8 Roadster. 1932 was the first year for the flathead V8, and this is being presented by the Ron Thorne Collection, a collection almost entirely of early V8 Fords that Worldwide Auctioneers has the pleasure of selling this year. And this example is just exactly what I get excited about. The reason why is because the 1932s are basically Model A's just with a flathead V8. Now, as you guys know, I have a lot of experience with Model A's, and it's just so cool that this is essentially a Model A with a big V8. Hopefully, this will be one of the cars I get to drive later, and it will be awesome because I've always wanted to drive a very first year flathead car in this configuration. And this one is probably the best one in the world. It's absolutely stunning with its red paint, this accent line that goes through. I mean, the interior is practically identical to a Model A. It's got the machine turn dash, that's not exactly Model A-ish, but everything else, from the way it looks, the rumble seat, the spare tire, it's just a Model A with a V8, and I absolutely love it. In contrast to that, you can see the 1937 Ford just five years later, and look how far they came. This was a much, much more advanced car. By then, they had changed the flathead a little bit. It made a minuscule amount more power, but it was a lot more reliable. And look at all the creature comforts you get. This actually has roll-up windows, a top that probably seals correctly, and just gorgeous, gorgeous styling. They'd integrated the headlights, they'd moved to that more streamlined, big fender look, gone away from the horseless carriage look, and more into the modern era, and it's just cool to see cars just five years apart make so much progress. Speaking of progress, let's take a step way back in time. This is a 1907 shot runabout. 1907. This was the earliest days of the car and you can really tell because it just looks like a carriage. This is where the term horseless carriage came from. Manufacturers essentially took existing carriage technology, put a motor in it and a steering wheel, and boom, you had an automobile. But this is just so neat to see one this old in this great of shape. Take a look at some of the features this thing has. First of all, I mean, you have almost Oregon Trail-like wagon wheels. These things are huge and no exaggeration, pinchably thin. I think this is just solid rubber. You got acetylene torch headlights, nothing electronic about those. Your radiator just kind of blows onto your feet. The steering wheel is just straight up and down. This whole thing is incredible that it exists. Think about all of the stuff it had to go through to be here in 2022. This thing has had an incredible life. Speaking of horseless carriage, look, it's even in the horseless carriage society. But under here, you have the magnificent two-cylinder open valved engine. This is primitive automotive technology at its absolute finest. And you can tell this is about as clean as one gets because, well, this thing's kind of spattering oil everywhere as it drives along. You've also got a massive flywheel back there, kind of like a hit and miss engine. Being this close to essentially the genesis of automotive technology is just hard to describe. It is a very, very cool thing. And the fact that Worldwide Auctioneers is letting me touch it and grab it and just be around it is, is incredible. It's also a dual chain rear wheel drive car. And I thought this was neat. It's got kind of, I guess, quiver. I'm sure it's for like an umbrella or something like that. But you know, this was also the days when you might need your bow and arrow, you never know. Okay, so awesome update. I talked to the folks and they're actually going to let me drive this 1932 Ford Roadster on the road. And as a rare treat, they're actually sending a videographer along with me. So you'll get some rare, highly produced content. I'll throw to that right now. And I'm so excited to be driving a first year flathead V8 Ford. Let's do this. All right, so they got it out. And here begins the highly produced segment of this video where I actually get professionally shot driving this, a 1932 Ford, the first year for the flathead V8. What an opportunity. Let's get this thing out on the road. Ugh, just like a Model A, kinda. <laughs> Honestly, let's see if it's still got the Awuga horn. It does not. All right, ready to go? Yeah. All right, so first is back and to the left. Doesn't need much throttle because this thing's all about torque. Oh. All right, out on the road in the 32 Ford double clutching into second. And you can just hear that iconic flathead V8 sound. Thumpity thump thumping away. And what an experience having the first year of the flathead V8 out on the road. But what is essentially still a Model A everything else, including the brakes, which are mechanical. So when I hit the brakes here in a second, 
There is no fluid. I'm just pushing rods into drums and it makes for a kind of very uneven braking experience. But luckily we're not exactly flying, so. <laughs> you need to turn around. And this is the non-power steering, non-parking lot designed, almost 100 year old Ford experience here. <laughs> Back in business. And what's interesting here is I've driven some flathead V8 Fords before, but never a first year car. And one of the things about the first year car that they changed is it doesn't have pressurized bearings. There are a couple of other water pump things that they changed later on. This car still makes 85 horsepower, which is very respectable at the time. More than anything, it's just torquey and it makes driving what is essentially a Model A, again, that much cooler. I mean, Model A's are a little out of breath, even at this kind of speed. And this thing feels like I could easily go 45 or 50. Takes turn pretty well, considering we still have the, the old school suspension. I've got the Greyhound on the hood, which is awesome. I mean, this thing just, it drives really well considering. Now that does not mean it drives like a modern car by any means. It's still old. It still has, you know, transverse leaf springs and weird suspension components and the steering wheel's big and it kind of wanders, but that's what driving a 90 year old car is. And I'll tell you what, there's no other better experience to make you appreciate how far modern cars have come. But the other experience that I'm having right now is driving a car that will be sold at auction later today that's not mine. That's also an experience in itself. And we gotta put arm signals on because we are turning and this car does not have turn signals. Another 1930s thing. But this is something that I could only do with the folks at Worldwide Auctioneers. What an opportunity this has been to have a classic like this out on the road. A lot of these cars got turned into hot rods. Understandably so. You hear this noise, you see this body, you're kind of like, well, let's, let's add some parts to it. And in the 50s, these things were dirt cheap. And what ended up happening was, well, everybody turned them into hot rods, so there just aren't that many left. Seeing an original flathead V8 32 Ford is one thing. Driving one is unheard of, and I'm so happy to have been able to do this. Massive thank you to the folks at Worldwide Auctioneers for this opportunity. This is a day I won't soon forget. Open arm cruising in a car I've always dreamed of driving. I still gotta toot the horn again. <laughs> this is fantastic. Not graceful getting out of there, but wow. What an opportunity it was to drive what is honestly one of my dream cars, the first year of the Ford Flathead V8 in Roadster form. I've always dreamed of driving one of these and Worldwide Auctioneers made it possible. And then as a bonus, they actually let me have a camera crew and I got to have a highly produced segment on top of it. So what an incredible opportunity. Huge shout out to those guys. Be sure to check them out. They have this and so many other amazing exclusive lots only available at Worldwide Auctioneers. Now, back to your regular produced content. All right, just got back from driving the 32 Ford. That was absolutely incredible. But now we're back to my regular film quality. So right over here is something called a diamond truck. Very rare, very luxurious, kind of a interesting thing back in the day before you got King Ranch trucks and before Denali trucks. That was kind of the Denali of its time. Still functional, still able to be used for hauling stuff, but definitely more on the nicer side. But something that you guys will all enjoy is this car behind me, a 1991 Lamborghini Diablo with a factory deleted rear wing. Now that is pretty rare. And I know you guys already know another Wichita YouTuber that has one of these, but I love this one. It's different than Hoovies though. This one's only rear wheel drive and this one's a coupe. And I just love it in white. And because I'm technically working for the auction, I can open it. And that just never gets old opening a Lamborghini door. I'll tell you what. Inside you got your standard Lamborghini stuff. First gear is actually back into the left and everything in here just looks as pristine as you could imagine it would. That is probably one of the most modern cars they have here. It might be one of the newest actually, but check this out. Same owner of this car actually owns another one of my favorite cars at this auction. And that is this guy hiding in the corner. This is a Lamborghini Yalpa. And I know some of you probably watched Doug DeMiro's video on these, but this was Lamborghini's attempt at making a more accessible, but still cool car. Think of it as the Gallardo of the time, but this thing just looks Really, really cool. Again, same owner, so it has a factory deleted rear wing. Normally these have an almost Countach-like wing, but it's got the factory OZ wheels, and in here, the classic color combination of everything being red. But look at this, it is absolutely pristine in here. 
kind of just an interesting dash layout. It's kind of just a normal 80s car compared to, you know, the Diablo or the Countach. And my absolute favorite part is that this roof comes off. This is a Targa, and I think that makes a big, big difference in the enjoyability of any car, let alone your entry-level exotic. Around back, something that's interesting is the actual logo for Yalpa is kind of in negative. Like, you really can't read that. It's almost in Jalopnik font, but kind of looks like Kapla. Very interesting. But this is a car that a lot of people just don't know exists. I don't think they made more than like five or 600 of them. And it's just really cool to see one in person. This is a 32 Ford Phaeton. And this is very similar to the Roadster I just drove, except this is a four-door convertible, but still no windows. So this was a very interesting family car and talk about another thing that's rare. I think they only made a thousand or so of these in 32. And uh, well, you can imagine as time has gone by, there are definitely not that many left. Now over here is something that I have a soft spot in my heart for. This is a 1936 Ford Cabriolet. And I grew up with my dad having a 1936 Ford Roadster, very similar to this. This car is just burned into my memory as very, very special. In fact, when I was like 15, some of the first times I ever drove a manual car on the road was in a 36 Ford almost identical to this. Absolutely incredible to see one. I'm super excited to see what this hammers for. Personally, I hope it goes for a lot because this is just an important car to me. Moving on, this kind of looks like a Cadillac, kind of looks like a Chevy, but this is something very special. This is what's called a Chevy El Morocco, and it was basically Chevy's attempt to make an upscale car for their own lineup. And the idea here is they're gonna make an upscale car that is kind of Cadillac quality, but Chevy cost to repair. You might think, well, they made a bunch of those. They made 16 of them, and one is here at Worldwide. It's incredible. I never thought I'd see one. I barely even knew these existed, and I had to figure out what it was when I first saw it, but this is just outstanding to see. Very, very cool car, exceptionally rare. And as you can imagine, in absolutely perfect museum quality, everything on it is perfection. Ooh, they just opened the hood on the cord. I gotta see this. And there is the supercharged eight cylinder. You might say, wait, where's the supercharger? It's not like the superchargers that are kind of up front like a pro charger. It is a flat pancake supercharger, but trust me, it is still pushing air into this thing. And now you can really see the exhaust in its full extent. That is a rare sight to see one of those with the hood up. That's incredible. Over here, you have a 1967 Corvette with the 427 big block. You can always tell right away because it has this stinger hood. This was the way to have one of these cars. It was the final year of the C2, but by this time it had independent rear suspension, four wheel disc brakes. It was just a really good driving car. My dad had a red one of these growing up and I've always, always wanted one. Very cool to see one here. And I think I'll end it on this. This is a 1939 Ford Woody. And unlike PT Cruisers and the Chrysler Town and Countries and stuff like that that you see from the modern age, this was real wood and not just wood paneling. Check this out. This door is made entirely of wood. Look, even here, wood. And then on the inside, it's wood. This is a totally wooden door. And then the craftsmanship continues on the inside, even on the roof. Look at that. Look at the woodwork. The craftsmanship required to not only make that, but to preserve it for this long is absolutely astonishing. Well guys, I think that's gonna do it for my coverage of the Worldwide Auctioneers January Scottsdale auction. Thank you guys for watching. What a tremendous opportunity this has been to just be here, be around these cars, and even drive one of my personal dream cars. Be sure to check out Worldwide Auctioneers. I'll link their website below, and hopefully you will have seen my live coverage by now. But other than that, be sure to follow me on Instagram. I've been trying to post as much as I can around here. Like me on Facebook, join my Facebook group. It's a great place to share memes, and I'm almost always in there interacting in the comments. And other than that, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe on this video. It greatly helps my YouTube performance. And I will see you guys at the next event.